Hey CPAP users, if you're experiencing a dry mouth or dry swollen eyes, check this video out because it's going to give you some instructions on how to control your CPAP mask leakage. Hey everybody, this is Narina, respiratory therapist at Lofta. Today we're going to be discussing how mask leaks can occur and how we can fix them up. Let's get started. So you might be experiencing CPAP mask leakage if you have the following symptoms. Swollen eyes, dry mouth, you're using a lot more water from your water tub, but you're still feeling dried out. Your AHI or events per hour are elevated past five and you're experiencing higher levels of leakage than normal. Or you might be removing the mask unknowingly and waking up with it completely off of your face somewhere on the ground. We don't want that to happen, so let's get started in treating those symptoms by fixing up your mask leak. Depending on your mask style, leakage can be occurring in different places. Now, of course, the most minimal type of mask is a nasal pillows mask. Nasal pillows masks are going to have these two little cones that are going to sit beneath each of your nostrils and direct the airflow straight into your nose. The most common occurrence or reason for leakage would be oral venting or mouth breathing. So this can be captured by the following symptoms, dry mouth or increased humidifier usage with feeling completely dried out. So if you are mouth breathing, you could always invest in a chin strap or mouth tape. Chin straps are basically like little pieces of fabric that are gonna hug your chin like a tiny little hammock and they're gonna Velcro to the top of your head. So that way it just provides you a little bit more relief so that way you're not super conscious of your jaw falling open at night. This can be something that subconsciously happens to our muscles. So no worries about that. Some people do feel like chin straps could be a little invasive or just provide a little bit more gear on your head. So if you're not really a fan of a chin strap, you're always more than welcome to try out some mouth tape. And I don't talk about duct tape. We don't want you to put duct tape on your mouth. You're not being kidnapped. You're just using your CPAP machine and we want you to sleep like a little angel. So when it comes to mouth tape, it's either going to be shaped like a little X that goes over your lips to keep your mouth from falling open or the more effective ones that I've seen are going to be the shape of your mouth with a little slit so that way you can still have airflow passing through and you're not completely constricted, but it will, um, it will prevent you from keeping your mouth from falling open throughout the night. So that would be a good way to treat mouth breathing with a nasal pillows mask. Other instances could be that your mask is kind of loosening up in the middle of the night. So with each movement, it's kind of dislodging. If that's the case, we can always talk about different mask options. Maybe something like a nasal mask that covers the nose completely so it's a little bit more stable. Now, the second most minimal type of mask is a nasal cradle mask. This one is going to lay flat under your nose. There's nothing actually poking into your nostrils. And when it comes to nasal cradles, I'm going to be super honest with you. These are more prone to slipping and sliding around. So as far as it goes with leakage, it could be that your mouth is falling open or it's more likely that your mask is shifting or dislodging in the middle of the night. If that's the case for you, you might want to opt for nasal pillows that will have something to anchor it to your face and are less likely to slip around. Or you can also try a nasal mask that covers the nose completely. On your nasal cradle mask, if you're noticing that it's shifting around quite a bit, you probably want to refer to your sizing guide that came in your package. The sizing guide will allow you to understand which size is going to be the most optimal fit for you. Now, when it comes to any sort of ResMed Eye Series masks or Dreamwear masks, you've got to make sure that you're wearing the correct size frame. The frame is the portion with the tubing at the top of the head that kind of encircles the face and has your cushion sitting right at your nose. If that frame is too large, that cushion will sit low on the face and create air leaks between the nose and the mask. If the frame is too small, it's going to kind of push your nose up like a little piggy nose, and that's not going to be a good fit either. So it depends on your mask. It could either be the size of the cushion or the frame size. So now I would say that the second most minimal contact type of mask is going to be a traditional nasal mask that completely covers the nose. If you're dealing with leakage on your nasal mask, it might feel like there's air shooting into your eyes because it's leaking at the nasal bridge, or you could feel like there's airflow coming out of your mouth. So when you open your mouth on any sort of nasal style, you're going to feel like a fire breathing dragon, except it's gonna be a ton of air rushing out instead of fire, of course. And so we definitely wanna make sure that if your mouth is falling open, opening, 
If your mouth is falling open at night, you definitely want to make sure that you have a chin strap or mouth tape readily available, or we gotta put you on a full face mask. Now let's talk about some things that can occur with a traditional nasal. It's very common that if you have a shallow nasal bridge or even a larger nasal bridge, the mask is not going to seal properly. If you're running into issues with the nasal bridge area, you might want to opt for either a pillows mask or a cradle mask. So that way you're not touching the nasal bridge and you can resolve all the leakage coming from there. With a traditional nasal mask, as you can see, side profile, it is going to protrude out of the face a little bit. So if you're somebody that likes to sleep on your side and maybe nestle your head into your pillow, you might run into something that we call positional leakage. Positional leakage is when you lay in a certain body position, the mask hits the pillow and it causes the seal to break. So in that case, if you're in love with your mask, but you just want a better option as far as treating that positional leakage, you might want to get a CPAP pillow. A CPAP pillow is like the regular pillow you rest your head on every night, but it has cutouts on the side. So that way, when you're resting on your side, the mask is not touching the pillow and the seal is not being broken. So this is my friend here. <laughs> just kidding, I don't really know him, but he is my friend because he makes it easy to understand how a CPAP pillow works. He's laying on his side. His mask would have obviously been hitting his pillow and breaking the seal, but here he is resting like a little baby angel. We love him very much. Thank you, Guy, for doing this for us. Your picture is appreciated. <laughs> so when you're looking at this pillow, you can see that there's two cutouts on the side. Your head would be here, and then when you turn onto your side, your mask would not be hitting your pillow because it's completely cut out. The next type of mask we're going to be talking about is a hybrid full face mask. So this is going to be a bit more minimal contact. They completely cover the mouth and they sit underneath the nose. Usually the portion underneath the nose will have two holes that line up with each of your nostrils, or you'll have a slit underneath the nose. Both should be able to provide airflow in your nose as necessary or in your mouth if your nose is congested or you're not breathing through your nose. The reasons that you can run into leakage on a hybrid mask, again, this is going to be more so for the iSeries ResMed masks or the Dreamwear full face. Um, it's going to be the cushion or the frame size. Your cushion is the portion that covers the mouth and goes under the nose. However, the frame with the tubing at the top of the head is going to also dictate where the mask sits on your face. If the frame is too large, your mask will be sitting kind of underneath your nose, so there won't be a seal here. If your frame is too tiny, it's going to be pushing your nose upward and that's going to be uncomfortable and will likely create a uh, pore seal around your mouth or underneath your nose. Now this might not be something that you've heard of before, but even with a full face mask, there are some limits to how much you can use your mouth to breathe. If your mouth is falling open excessively, this can cause the mask to shift upwards. And in some cases, people will describe it like I'm eating my mask. If you're eating your mask, you probably need a chin strap or mouth tape. You probably don't want to get yourself set up with a chin strap or mouth tape if you're so congested that you feel like restricting your um, mouth breathing would cause any issues. However, you might want to look into different models of full face masks, maybe run ones that run a little bit larger so that way you can use your mouth to breathe and open your mouth excessively. But it is pretty common that full face mask users, even though you can breathe through your mouth, might just be opening up their mouth excessively and causing leakage to occur. So positional leakage is the most common when it comes to full face masks. This means that you're covering way more surface area so you're more likely to have leakage when you're laying on your side. So again, the remedy for that is going to be a CPAP pillow. If you're really in love with your mask, but you're only getting leakage when you're on your sides, it might be better to invest in a CPAP pillow versus trying on tons of different masks and kind of ruining your sleep in that regard. If you have facial hair and you're struggling to maintain a good mask seal, you might want to opt into a type of mask that does have memory foam. So that way the memory foam can adhere to the facial hair a little bit better. But overall, I've seen miracles work with silicone masks. It's really just a matter of making sure that you're doing your mask fit test to make sure that your mask is creating an efficacious seal even with the facial hair, whether it's just a tiny bit of stubble or a big Santa Claus beard, but it can definitely work for you. If all else fails and you've tried all of these steps and multiple masks, you might wanna reach out to your provider to see if they can update your pressures or maybe some comfort features that will help reduce your leakage. If you wanted to figure out why our customers love the P10 uh, pillows by ResMed, you can go ahead and check out this video. I don't know where to 
point. 